<laughs> Welcome back. We are having um, a lot of fun with our <laughs> yeah. friends, Troy and <laughs> Shannon you Zeman. If you want to know more about their work for your family, for your business, for your school, for your church, um, you can go to SC. Z, S C Z, active shooter. Dot com. Mm -hmm. And you can learn all about them and their work and hire them for your organization. Uh, you can just see how articulate and wonderful human beings they are. And, you know, as I'm, I'm listening to this and you're like, you know, I didn't really expect to see mm -hmm. trauma. Yeah. I, I think oncologists and a lot of physicians don't really grasp how traumatic yeah. being in the fight for cancer yes. really is. But it's not just that. It's the fight for cancer. It's the Route 91, you know, mm -hmm. massacre that yeah. you were able to survive. But it's also being the wife mm -hmm. of a police officer yeah. who's experienced a lot of trauma. Yeah. But if you love him, and it seems like you do, that every day you worry about, well, what's going to happen today? Yeah. And that's sort of, it, it's, you know, the zebra is like the trauma happens once. And then it's done and their nervous system goes back to normal, but not when you're in it day after day, year after year. Right. Yeah. I actually wanted to touch on the first responder bit. Um, so when I met Daniel, he scanned me two weeks after I met him and never heard that line before that he wanted to see my brain. But um, so, it, but it was really interesting because I had, I have the diamond pattern. And so he started like questioning me about my past and it, it didn't occur to me at the time. I was a level A trauma unit at Loma Linda where the helicopter's flying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about it. I'm like, I don't think it's my past as much as it is. Honestly. I mean, it probably was, and I was just in denial, but, mm -hmm. um, but I honestly, the thing that had been so on my mind for the prior years, I don't know if police officers go through this. Maybe they don't because they're men. Maybe they handle it differently. I remember just feeling sick every day I'd go on that unit for the first few months. And that, I mean, physically ill because I didn't know how to like process what I was seeing. Mom's on the floor screaming as they're, you know, gunshot chest, gunshot wound to the chest, gunshot wound to the head, their kid walking in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. That trauma, I think that's what actually was building up. I think that's what he was seeing more than anything. So first responders, you see even, you see it before I got to see it. Right, right. So it's hard. So we see the carnage um, on a daily basis. Right. Um, especially when I, I got on the department when I was 21. Um, I did nothing but soccer. That's all I did, soccer, and then became a cop. And um, I worked in South Central in LA for a long time. Yeah. And um, it was every day. And it's tough to not only see the carnage and the and the trauma there, but you have to deal with it. And and I think that there's a lot uh, that goes behind um, research that shows that officers are dealing with trauma um, constantly, and that's why we're getting high uh, suicide rates. Right. Um, in in double it's, the population. I mean, double. That's so sad. Wow, that that's pretty good. Is, that's high. It's it's unacceptable. It's just unacceptable. And during your training to be a police officer. How much training did you get on, well, how do I deal with this psychologically? Right. How and do it, I deal with my brain? Right. When I, my brain is exposed to. And this I got hired in, in the nineties. So it wasn't as, as, uh, important right. as it is nowadays. Um, I think we do a, a lot better, um, job doing that, but it still is a practice and a, and very common that officers, it's hard. It's hard for us to be that vulnerable person to go get help. Um, and I think that's one of the things that we deal with a, as law enforcement everywhere is not only are we seeing the trauma and we're trying to be empathetic and we're trying to be compassionate, um, but then um, people don't understand where we come from. And you can't imagine the mm -mm. things that we do. Nope. And because of that, you see an officer do something and you're like, well, I wouldn't have done that. And then you immediately go to, well, he's a bad dude. Right. And then now, now not only are we being empathetic and compassionate and trying to go out there and putting our families yeah. on the line. Uh, okay, hold on. On the line. But we are also being told we're bad people. Right. And that's a hard it's thing. It's so unfair. Not, not are they at their work necessarily or like some people telling them they're bad people or them concerned no, it's society. about it's all the time right. he's off duty and the news comes on and that's a trigger immediately because there's a video right of they're not showing officer. the other side right. they're not showing right. the whole video they're not showing and then it, it immediately it's that jump into 
you know, this, this person is bad because I wouldn't have done it. And so when he's at home relaxing, these situations are happening on social media, they're happening in, and, you know, my, it, Troy chose to be a police officer because <coughs> he wanted to protect and serve. That's what he's always wanted to do. That's what, and it kills him that he can't do the job that he always wanted to do because he's always having to look over his back. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. that's So when I tragic. did a ride along uh, preparing for, you know, my um, brain health with the police department. I asked the young officer I was with, what's his biggest worry? And it's just what you guys are talking mm-hmm. about. It's I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to get sued. Public I perception. could end up in jail mm-hmm. when I'm always trying to do the right thing. And, you know, with social media, I say, you know, every idiot has a voice. Right. And unfortunately, the news goes to what gets the most clicks yes. and what gets the most clicks mm-hmm. is conflict. Yes. And so um, it distorts the reality of the situation. And so that's why for me, I don't read the comments, mm-hmm. you know, no. and some of them are awesome and some of them are horrible. Yeah. And I tell all the young stars I see, it's like, don't read the comments because they're going to poison right. your mind. And they're not, real right mm-hmm. they're not real yeah it's um this was an interesting conversation i had with um one of my nieces she grew up in a lot of trauma with without getting into that story um we were driving one day and she said something about a cop and i'm like i was a little shocked and i'm like what where did that come from because she's young i'm like where, where do you think that feeling came from why do you have that perception of police officers and she was quiet for a minute she's a really smart kid but she was quiet for a minute and she goes because my first memories of cops were bad. And I said, why? And she said, because I remember being in the back of a car with my dad. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so now we're getting somewhere. So your perception of police officers is related to your dad. I said, how many times has your dad been arrested? And she stopped. And I said, so your perception of a police officer is based on someone else breaking the law repeatedly. Mm -hmm. It's not based on your own experience with them. And so when I was growing up, Every time I saw a cop, I felt safer because I never felt safe otherwise. Like, I was like, <laughs> so I'm like, isn't it interesting how your perception can be skewed by your mm-hmm. environment growing yeah. up? Yes. And it's really important that we start pointing this out to our kids because they go through life adopting these ideas that aren't even theirs. Right. right. They're not even their ideas. So let's summarize some of the things that we've learned. If you've been in a traumatic situation, the sooner you get help the better. Mm -hmm. Um, The scans can really help because it can Mm -hmm. uncover things you may not know that are there. Um, Mm -hmm. Whatever venue you're in, if you're in a public venue, just start paying attention Mm -hmm. that where are the exits in case someone goes crazy. I take a first aid kit everywhere. Right. And you know, it it may only happen, may never happen in your life and it may only happen once or twice, but it's just a good idea to be prepare and and to be aware. What are some of the other things you teach people that you think are just super helpful? Um, We actually teach uh, run, hide, fight. It's a Department of Homeland Security mantra um, that they they put out there. And um, we teach how to actually run in, in in an event such as this. And we teach how to actually hide in an event such as this. And then we teach that last resort of how to actually fight in an event like this. And some of that fighting doesn't mean you have to be physical. Mm -hmm. You're still fighting through your emotions. You're still fighting fighting through the physiological effects that you're going through. And sometimes you have to fight through injury, but you can make it. And one of the things that we teach um, everybody and we want everybody to know is that we have grown up knowing that if you cut your finger, you have to go immediately to the hospital and get some stitches. But I can tell you that your body is unbelievably resilient to damage you can take immense amount of damage and still be able to to save yourself mm-hmm. or others. You don't, don't shut down. Yes. Don't yeah. give up. So don't think just because I have an injury or I got shot that I have to give up. Mm-hmm. I have to continue to go. Obviously, there are a couple of places in your body that if you take a, a bullet right. to, you're probably not going to be able to walk out of there. But if it, just because you get injured, um, we talk about the injuries that happened at Las Vegas. We talk about the injuries that I've seen on duty um, in LA and how people have, have fought through those injuries and done the things they did, 
Um, one of the things is just like we talked about before was the officers, you know, they, some people say, why does it take five officers to take somebody down? Well, I can tell you that unless we're trying to, um, you know, put them to sleep in a bad way, it's hard to resist. It's, it's hard to hold down one adult person. Mm-hmm. Male, Especially female, if they're on drugs. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. Their Your adrenaline, bodies their are adrenaline amazing. is surging and, and, too. And yes. a show of force helps to calm people down. I mean, I know that as a psychiatrist, if somebody on the ward right. is, becomes aggressive, the more people you can get to help, the calmer that person becomes. Right. Right. It's kind and of the less, where, where do they run? And, do they and, run away from it? Do, do they? Ha- is there a strategy to yes. run? Our strategy is to assess, um, make a plan where you are going to run to. It's a short run. It's not, I'm going to run to An- Angel Stadium. Right. Um, but it's a short plan. I think that I can go out the door. Once you get out the door, you're going to reassess and then you're going to run again. Whatever that plan is. If my plan is to go to the front door, then you only run to that front door and then reassess. You don't just run through the door and then just keep running aimlessly. Um, one of the things that happened at the Ariana Grande concert yeah. in Manchester, England was that, um, you know, a person goes into the concert. Yeah. Um, detonates, and then as they run out, another gunman is outside. Yeah. So if they made the plan to run to the door, they could reassess that before running into the next gunman. So mm-hmm. that's kind of the things that we talk about. I think one of the um, most interesting things to me that I've heard Troy talk about, because it was, I mean, I'm I'm educated by listening to him talk too, is um, when we do the uh, site walkthroughs. So we can walk through um, your building a facility, like a a grocery store or your church or anything, Troy actually shows people all of the deficiencies Mm -hmm. that the active shooter has and all the advantages as a civilian that we have. Mm -hmm. And we're just not trained that way. We we think that someone has a gun, they have all the advantages and we we're just sitting ducks and we have nothing to do. Excuse me. And um, that is, I think one of the biggest takeaways, Troy will show you the, you know, safest walls to hide on. Troy will show you, like, if the person was, you know, coming towards you, how you can utilize a, uh, he loves the three-hole punch to talk about, you know, the old three-hole, heavy three-hole punch. So it it's extremely interesting to see how he does that. It shows you, you know, you're going to run, you don't want to run in a straight line Mm-mm. because that's an easy target. So those are all different things that, um, it's very empowering to know that we mm-hmm. actually have more power yes. than agree. they do. I, I agree. And I that's one of the reasons I like to train so much. It's not because I think that I'm tough. It's because I feel safer. Yes. I feel safer when I'm trained. The more knowledge I have, the safer I feel. Maybe that's a misconception, but at least I have something. It's it's after being attacked when I was 15, you either go into victim, I went into victim mode for about a week and I went, no, this isn't okay. This, I don't like this. This is, why is it my fault that mm-hmm. some crazy guy yes. grabbed me on the street? And so I flipped that switch and it's, maybe I still, like you said earlier, maybe if I fought, I, I, I wouldn't win, but at least I'm going to fight. Right. And that, um, that training empowers you to feel like you can do something. Yeah. Even if it's get away. Absolutely. <laughs> so, the usually yeah. if it's get away. Well, I know with my job, um, we see a lot of uh, the suspects that we take into custody. Um, and, and one of the things that uh, mentally defeats them is there if, if, if we can make them powerless. Yeah. So if we can make them powerless, they are defeated and they don't resist either physically or verbally. But if they feel empowered, they will resist more physically or verbally. Right. And so if... We use the strategies of the more people that get there, maybe we can defeat them mentally real quick right. and make them feel like they don't have control. So I use that in our training to say, if you have control, you are going to be better off. That's important. I want to actually just touch on that again. So one of the reasons so many officers show up is to defuse it quickly. Yes. So it's not to show the success of force. It's really in hope of not showing any force. So we, we our research has found over the years is that if I fight with five officers, I'm less likely to get injured than if I fight with one. Because you're more likely to get shot. Or that one officer is going to try to do everything Excessive he can to knock th- right, you out. Right, right. Because he doesn't scared. want to die. Right. It, I mean, we've seen over the years that one punch can knock an officer out and then the person gets the gun and kills right. the officer. Right, um, I've had that three times a, a, attempts on my life to hit me and get my gun. Um, there is a tactic that bad people use and they train this in prisons. 
And because of that, <laughs> it's good to know. <laughs> right. We watch it on video. So, I mean, these are things that the public doesn't understand. I, I understand we can't train the public on everything we know. But if you are fighting one officer, the only thing going through their mind is you're going to get my gun and kill me. Right. If you're not fighting five, we have we have more control. We feel safer with my partner there. I can hold your arms down and he can hold your legs or she can grab your head and shoulders and hold them, pin you down, and then I can handcuff you. Right, and so all of this looks bad on video. Yes. But it's actually safer. It's very much safer. Research shows that people are less likely to get the injuries that they would if they had one or two officers fighting them. Well, I, I just want to say, you know, we have to such, stop, such but there's great, so much yeah. to do. I am so grateful you're both our friends, and I'm grateful for what both of you do to serve yes, thank uh, you. other people. Um, that's why um, I just love the opportunity to work with the police mm -hmm. that we do. Um, I'm just grateful for you. And well, to learn you. more about their work, S C is in cat, Z is in zebra, S C Z active shooter dot com, mm -hmm. and you can communicate with them. And um, I, I just think what they're doing is amazing, and it fits our brand yeah. warriors way community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855-978-1363.